never saw him as the winner. Of course, it could be chalked up to sour grapes. All the magazines carried articles pertaining to the fact that it was fixed. But that particular contest was so clearly fixed that every other competitor and many of the fans in the audience. It brought into clear focus for me really what the political establishment and bodybuilding is really all about. In some ways, I'm glad the 80 Olympia turned out the way it did. Mike Menser and Arnold Schwarzenegger represented the two main pillars of the 1970s bodybuilding world, and the feud between the legendary bodybuilders is known to every bodybuilding enthusiast. Let's have a deeper look into the two and their feud. Very important. It's hard to determine exactly how important, along with motivation. Well, it's one of those proverbial, often heard stories in bodybuilding. I was at a drugstore with my mother in my local, in my hometown of Ephrata, Pennsylvania, and all of a sudden my attention was arrested by the sight of a muscle man. And I knew instantly there was no lag time. This is what I was going to be. I'd say it's right up there, a prime determinant for sure. Uh, in bodybuilding, the indices aren't quite as evident, but things like you mentioned, muscle belly length, bone size. Bodybuilding icon. A regimen of exercises designed to enhance the human body's muscular development and promote general health and fitness. As a competitive activity, bodybuilding aims to display in artistic fashion pronounced muscle mass, symmetry, and definition for overall aesthetic effect. Barbells, dumbbells, and other resistance training devices are used in the exercises. Bodybuilding by the ancient Greeks served as the origin and inspiration for its practice by most of later societies. Modern competitions grew largely out of European strongman theatrical and circus acts of the late 19th century. The first American physique contest, staged by physical culturalist Bernard McFadden, took place in 1903 in New York City. The winner, Al Trelore, was named the most perfectly developed man in the world. Similar contests were held by McFadden in 1921 and 1922, with Charles Atlas the winner both times. But bodybuilding contests were rare until the inception of the Mr. America contest in 1939 under the auspices of the Amateur Athletic Union of the United States. Thereafter, Mr. America winners John Grimmick (1940–41) and Steve Reeves (1947) served as role models for a generation of aspiring bodybuilders. The sport developed quickly after World War II, and the AAU Mr. America contest reached the height of its popularity in the late 1950s and the 1960s. Concurrently, there emerged two rival organizations: the International Federation of Bodybuilders, founded by Canadians Joe and Ben Weeder in 1946 and in Britain, the National Amateur Bodybuilders Association, founded by Oscar Heidenstam in 1950. The latter's Mr. Universe contest, staged in London, was the most prestigious international bodybuilding event for about 25 years. It was surpassed in the 1970s by the Mr. Olympia competition conducted by the Weeders. The most important figure in the history of bodybuilding is the Austrian-born American bodybuilder Arnold Schwarzenegger, who won the Mr. Olympia title seven times 1970 to 75 and 1980. His awesome physique, winsome personality, and subsequent successful career in films was revolutionary in its impact, fostering a greater acceptance of bodybuilding and fitness related activities in American society. His Arnold Classic, a physique and fitness gala held annually in Columbus, Ohio, has become a premier event for physical culturalists. Six time Miss Olympia Corey Everson sparked a similar awakening in women's bodybuilding which began holding competitions in the 1970s. Without question, bodybuilders like Arnold Schwarzenegger had a positive impact on the bodybuilding fraternity. Schwarzenegger believes bodybuilding is generally positive, provided it's not taken to extremes. He said that the benefits of bodybuilding have been tremendous worldwide. When performed safely, lifting weights has many positive effects, including building muscle, burning body fat, strengthening bones and joints, reducing injury risk, and improving heart health. Schwarzenegger believes bodybuilding has been one of the hugest benefits of human development and physical development in the last 50 years. Arnold Schwarzenegger Arnold Schwarzenegger was born on July 30, 1947, near Graz, Austria, in a humble household. Both the brothers, Arnold and Meinhard, were required to get up before sunrise to tend to their chores. After chores came a rigorous exercise routine, followed by breakfast. Gustav also instilled a love of sports in his sons. Meinhard, who died when he was 23 years old in a car accident, was a boxing champion. Arnold showed promise as a soccer player. It was while performing exercises to strengthen his legs for soccer that Schwarzenegger turned to the sport that would eventually make him famous, bodybuilding. Arnold Schwarzenegger pursued weightlifting and bodybuilding with a passion. 
He trained for hours a day, both at a local gym and at home where he set up a training area in a room that had no heat. He also studied anatomy and nutrition to understand how to become physically fit. His parents worried that he was obsessed with training, but Schwarzenegger had his eyes on a goal. That goal was to leave his little village behind and become a success in America. In his own words, Arnold said that he learned something from all these years of lifting and training hard, and what he learned was that we are always stronger than we know. Since emerging on the bodybuilding scene in the late 1960s, Arnold Schwarzenegger has become one of the most influential and inspiring athletes in bodybuilding. What bodybuilder or even general fitness enthusiast doesn't know of Schwarzenegger? Even if you've never picked up a weight, you probably know of the Austrian native. As a bodybuilder, movie star, politician or environmental activist, He's so popular that you can refer to him as just Arnold, and most people know who you're talking about. Since retiring in 1980, Arnold has cast a long shadow and is still revered for his importance in helping to popularize bodybuilding among the masses. Arnold's appearance in the 1977 film Pumping Iron, the George Butler and Charles Gaines documentary centered on the 1975 Mr. Olympia, helped propel both Arnold and bodybuilding into mainstream culture. Fans and competitors owe him a great deal. Few people would dispute his legacy. From the time he migrated from Munich to Southern California in 1969, right through to his first retirement from professional bodybuilding in 1975, 1980 represented his brief competitive comeback, everything Arnold did revolved around training. Most people successfully pursue one or two careers throughout their lives. By the age of 56, Arnold Schwarzenegger had tackled at least three bodybuilding, acting, and politics. It is difficult to break into any one of these professions, yet Schwarzenegger managed to excel in each and every one. He earned 13 World Bodybuilding Championships, is considered one of the most influential actors in Hollywood, and in 2003, without ever running for political office before, he became the governor of California. If Schwarzenegger had listened to as many critics along the way, he never would have succeeded. However, with discipline, determination, and drive, he proved that an Austrian-born immigrant can achieve the American dream. Arnold Schwarzenegger has accomplished many incredible feats, and although building the most aesthetically pleasing physique played a considerable role in his success in life, he does not neglect his health. Even though bodybuilding isn't known for being the healthiest sport due to drug abuse, crash diets, and overtraining, Schwarzenegger almost always prioritized health. It's been more than four decades since Arnold Schwarzenegger won the last of his seven Mr. Olympia titles in 1980, yet the workouts that helped mold him into arguably the greatest bodybuilder ever are as valid today as they were then. Bodybuilding after Arnold's retirement When Arnold retired from bodybuilding in 1975, it ushered in a new age for the sport. Arnold had won the previous six competitions. His retirement meant that others could now compete for the Mr. Olympia title. Taking over Arnold's place was his training partner and close friend, the late Franco Colombo, who won the 1976 Olympia. From 1977 to 79, Frank Zane took the honors. Although two men shared the title over four years, the time after Arnold's victory was competitive. With Arnold out of the way, newer bodybuilders began to gain attention. Competitors like Boyer Co., Mike Menser, and a young Tom Platts. There was excitement in the sport. Arnold had previously been the athlete with the most sponsorships and magazine covers, who monopolized all the media attention. Now, fans could choose from a variety of different athletes and body types. If Arnold represented the ideal physique of the 1960s and 70s, these newer athletes were progressing the standard of bodybuilding further. Zane's reign, for example, marked a stark difference from Arnold's era. Compared to Arnold's approximate competition weight of 235 pounds, Zane weighed 185 pounds on stage. He was smaller, but also much leaner. His physique, by many, is considered to be the most aesthetic ever. Mike Menser Mike Menser is regarded as the most enigmatic figure in the bodybuilding world. He was born on November 15, 1951, in the Germantown section of Philadelphia and was of German descent. Menser started bodybuilding when he was 11 years old at a body weight of 95 pounds after seeing the men on the covers of several muscle magazines. His father had bought him a set of weights and an instruction booklet. The booklet suggested that he train no more than three days a week, so Mike did just that. By age 15, his body weight had reached 165 pounds, at which Mike could bench press 370 pounds. 
Mike's goal at the time was to look like his bodybuilding hero, Bill Pearl. After graduating high school, Menser served four years in the United States Air Force. It was during this time he started working out over three hours a day, six days a week. Menser started competing in local physique contests when he was 18 years old and attended his first contest in 1969. In 1978, Menser won the Mr. Universe in Acapulco, Mexico with the first and only perfect 300 score. He became a professional bodybuilder after that 1978 Mr. Universe win. In late 1979, Menser won the heavyweight class of the Mr. Olympia, again with a perfect 300 score, but he lost in the overall to Frank Zane, who was awarded the title for a third time that year. In the 1980 Mr. Olympia, he placed fourth in a tie with Boyer Co behind Arnold Schwarzenegger, Chris Dickerson, and Frank Zane. Menser was an objectivist and insisted that philosophy and bodybuilding are one and the same, stating that man is an indivisible entity, an integrated unit of mind and body. His books, therefore, concern themselves equally with philosophy and bodybuilding. That's something you can't determine until you actually begin training. I think all sports involve discipline. Uh, it depends upon how you define sport. Uh, I think the only the way to do it would be to assess his general intelligence level and listen as to how well he explains the principles of productive exercise. Uh, as you may know yourself, athletic training gets to be a little old as you get older yourself. It's actually very difficult. Presumably the person's going to the gym because he knows little or nothing about training. Menser followed the bodybuilding concepts developed by Arthur Jones and endeavored to perfect them. Through years of study, observation, knowledge of stress, physiology, the most up-to-date scientific information available and careful use of his reasoning abilities, Menser devised and successfully implemented his own theory of bodybuilding. Menser's theories are intended to help a drug-free person achieve his or her full genetic potential within the shortest amount of time. High-intensity training, the Mike Menser way, was Menser's final work. In it, he detailed the principles of high-intensity weight training. Weight training, he insisted, had to be brief, infrequent, and intense to attain the best results in the shortest amount of time. Menser was the first one to get the perfect scores in an elite contest in the history of competitions. It happened during 1978 Mr. Universe. Menser was considered a bodybuilding genius. He gave a market mass appeal to Arthur Jones's high-intensity training. Matter of fact, there are two, two types of basic training. You can train either for muscle mass or endurance, which tends to, to burn body fat and keep you lean. Those who are looking to just remain lean and not develop muscle, perhaps tone themselves, uh, the intensity factor, the amount of weight they lift is not so important. Those who want to build muscle mass, the most important principle is that of intensity. The harder you train, the more weight you lift, the more you put into it, the more muscle you'll develop. But in those who are still competing, I think there's an even greater use in abuse of steroids. For those who are hell-bent on competing, there's definitely more steroid use. Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Menser Arnold had established himself and his split training, mass volume program, as the central manner in which to train, the program that most bodybuilders look to emulate. But not all. Mike Menser represented the small but growing high-intensity training approach, which featured all-out intensity and a minimalist training session. Not only were these two programs opposite, so were their main proponents. In fact, they directly clashed. Mike and Arnold got into an argument at the 1980 Mr. Olympia in a head-to-head -head contest. And although Arnold won the title that year, most people believe to this day that Mike was in better shape and should have won the contest. In the pre-contest meeting, when Mike defended Boyer Co. on an issue, Arnold changed the subject by taunting a total non-sequitur at Mike, saying, Mike Menser, we all know Zane beat you last year because you have a big stomach. The two almost came to blows before others intervened. The training approach of both men were vastly different, as was their approach to life. Where Arnold was more of a schemer, Menser was a thinker. Arnold would try to overturn or upset fellow competitors, whereas Mike would help them out. Arnold became more famous, going on to become an international movie star and the governor of California. But in the bodybuilding world, Mike's hit training approach has actually picked up more ground since the time the two competed against each other and the HIT training style continues to become more popular across the board. And Mike's spot as one of the sharpest thinkers and most respected athletes in the sport remains unchallenged. He was concerned that his friend Arnold was going to destroy his legend, Jacques Lamarche. The day before the show at uh, Paul Grant's gym, he was very concerned. So it didn't bother me to hear 
sure that he was going to go on the show, especially in lesser conditions. But even if he had been in good condition, would have bought him. Very, very concerned, as a friend's concern, told me that, in fact, Arnold told him he was going to go on the show, and now he tried to talk him out of it. Maybe 50 or 60 people in there, and Arnold, as usual, wanted to be the center of attention. But he had said something, look, why don't we just let Arnold explain to all of us right here, right now, what his reasons are for wanting to have Mike Menser versus Arnold Schwarzenegger. As the 1980 year's press conference for Mr. Olympia, Arnold belittled competitors, disrupted discussions about the rules, and attempted to bring the spotlight onto himself. Mike Menser was so enraged by Arnold that he tried to attack him at the conference. As Menser was pulled away from Arnold, other competitors began to worry about what Arnold's involvement would mean the following day at the competition. One factor that appeared to reassure competitors not to worry was that Arnold's conditioning was worse than in previous Olympias. Although his chest, back, and biceps were back to former glories, his legs, triceps, and midsection all lagged in definition and size. Some put him at 90% of his former glory, others put him at 80%. The general consensus among fans and competitors was that Arnold was no longer a threat. Mike was a strong contender for the Olympia title and was admired for his rugged physique, but he promoted a very abbreviated but high-intensity workout. Menser balked at Schwarzenegger's marathon workouts and claimed that only one set per body part was enough for growth and that doing additional sets was actually counterproductive. Only once I stood up in the pre-judging meeting did that thing come to at least a partial halt, telling him that his, his behavior was reprehensible, that it was not boy or co who needed to grow up, but him shrinking away like an injured child. But in between Arnold and I and tried to assert himself, I just remember thinking how out of control he was. I thought these were supposed to be the guys that ran the show. But here you had this big Prussian son of a standing up acting like a Nazi. The infamous feud. To date, the infamous feud between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Menser is one of the biggest and most controversial off-stage rivalries in the bodybuilding world. The two first went at loggerheads during the competitors' meeting of the 1980 Mr. Olympia contest. It was the time when Arnold surprised everyone by making an unexpected comeback in the contest. Schwarzenegger shocked the bodybuilding world when he announced a comeback from retirement in 1980. Seemingly only in Sydney to do commentary for CBS TV, Arnold stunned the bodybuilding world by, on the morning of the contest, declaring that he was returning to competition in pursuit of a seventh title. This was just a day before the Mr. Olympia competition. Schwarzenegger announced he would take part in it too. Boyer Co., who was destined for fourth place, was one of the first to hear about Arnold's participation when Bill Pearl, three-time NABA Pro Mr. Universe, who withdrew from being head judge, called him in his hotel room and said he just wanted to let him know that Arnold is going to enter the contest. Pearl also added that Arnold wanted the competition to be run under the format of two classes, under 200 pounds and over 200 pounds, with the two class winners posing off for the title. The contest had been conducted along those lines from 1974 through 1979, but after the 79 Olympia, it was decided to go back to just an open class as the situation could occur where the second-placed guy in the lighter class may be better than the winner of the heavy class and vice versa. I realized then that Arnold was the ISBD to a very significant degree. I lost a lot of respect for Ben Weider and the rest of the people associated. After all, he never lets us forget he's the president of the ISBD. All of a sudden, he was letting this Nazi walk all over him. He sat there quietly. They, they're, they're the ones that were responsible. They let him run wild. However, Arnold's participation was not the leading topic of discussion around the event. One would think a surprise return and the shocking win from Schwarzenegger were all that disrupted the event, but they'd be wrong. There was more going on than these two incidents that scarred the year's event. Mike Menser was always displeased with the corruption that he claimed existed in the bodybuilding contests. After 1980, he has gone on record saying that Arnold Schwarzenegger wasn't a worthy winner. He said that during that competition, that IFBB let Arnold run wild as it was filled with his friends. He further added that no one other than the judges, who he claims were Arnold's friends, saw Arnold as the winner. 
was wild. Joe Weider told me later that Arnold was on cocaine that day. Most likely he was. But it became very clear, especially later on as the day proceeded, that things weren't the way they should be. 1980, I placed fifth at the Mr. Olympia, a contest that I and almost everyone else who witnessed it was convinced was fixed. It's interesting, at the 1980 Olympia, the only people who saw Arnold as the winner were the seven judges and his closest friends. I started laughing. It was ludicrous. So, it was so obviously an incorrect decision that my first response was just to laugh. The corruption was one of the reasons why Menser decided to take early retirement from the competition. In one of his interviews in 1993, Mike Menser described the situation that led to the rift between the two. A discussion started when Arnold arrived at the meeting and insisted on having two weight classes. Mike said that there were maybe 50 people at the competitors' meeting and Arnold wanted to be the center of attention. In every situation, he tried to be the standout, and on this occasion, he was the only athlete of the 16 in the contest who wanted to keep the two weight classes. For the unversed, Mr. Olympia was conducted in two weight classes, over 200 pounds and under 200 pounds, between 1974 to 1979. However, unknown to Arnold, the participants had signed a petition for the abolition of the class system. During the discussion, Arnold's condescending tone towards Boyer Co. did not go unnoticed by Menser. Hence, he interrupted Arnold and called him out on it. Arnold then directed his anger towards Menser and bit back by making personal remarks. This added fuel to the fire within Menser and led to him losing his control. Narrating what happened next, he said, I'm allowed that to irritate perhaps too much. And on impulse, I ran over towards him. I was surprised. Arnold Schwarzenegger sat down. I scared him. He went over and sat in the corner. And as I, when he went to sit down, I continued at him. I was wagging my finger at him, telling him that his behavior was reprehensible. That was not Boyer Co. who needed to grow up, but him. And he couldn't look me in the eye. He went from being a frantic, hysterical adolescent to shrinking away like an injured child, Menser continued. Not the first time in the history of bodybuilding, Joe Weider stepped in and defused the situation. He advised Arnold to accept the voices of the other 15. The debate ended as Arnold proclaimed, I withdraw my objection. Mike Menser claimed he should have won the 1980 Mr. Olympia in Sydney, but instead, Arnold won. He later quit bodybuilding after because he got fifth at that show. None of the audience, or very few, only those that were his friends. None of the other competitors saw him as the winner. Of course, it could be chopped up to sour grapes. All the magazines carried articles pertaining to the fact that it was fixed, but that particular contest was so clearly fixed that every other competitor and many of the fans in the audience. It brought into clear focus for me really what the political establishment in bodybuilding is really all about. In some ways, I'm glad the 80 Olympia turned out the way it did. From the eyes of Tom Platz. Tom Platz was one of the rising bodybuilders in the 1970s. During his second Mr. Olympia contest in 1980, Platz became the eyewitness of the infamous feud between Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Menser. During one of his seminars, Tom Platz once revealed what went down between the two that day. Platz believed that the squabble had a lasting effect on Menser. While it is known that Menser parted ways from the competitive bodybuilding world after the controversy, Platz thinks Menser never got over it, even though the two ultimately became friends. He also believes that the grudge Menser carried in his heart somewhere poisoned his mind and body and eventually led to his demise in 2001. In September 2018, Tom Platz conducted a seminar in collaboration with the David Gym in Zurich, Switzerland. During this seminar, Platz was asked about the famous 1980 Mr. Olympia controversy. Recalling his experience, Platz said, I remember Arnold said something about Mike's stomach. Arnold said, hey, you have a flat stomach anyhow. This infuriated Menser, who then rushed towards Schwarzenegger. Furthermore, Platz added that Menser had a lot of potential. He could have been the next Mr. Olympia had he let go of the matter. Platz called Menser the golden child and an intellectual bodybuilder. However, Menser's bitterness became the reason for his downfall. Feud Settled Arnold Schwarzenegger and Mike Menser are believed to have settled the feud before Menser passed away. However, it didn't happen until much later after the 1980 incident. For several years following the controversy, Menser held on to his anger, which, though, did reflect in many of his interviews. Menser has also gone on record to accept that the feud was the final push that made him part ways from the bodybuilding world. I thought that evil was something you just read about in novels and newspapers. 
But in fact, evil is something that's around all of us. For years, I was walking around in a fool's paradise. I thought everyone was as nice a guy as I was. Brought it all into focus, and I didn't want to be involved or associated with people like that, and decided to drop out. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.